What up, internet? This your boy, Hennessy Youngman, a.k.a. The Pharaoh Hennessy, a.k.a. Henrock Allah, a.k.a. Mr. Museums, a.k.a. The Pedagogic Pimp. Um, now, today, internet, I want to talk about this field of art production known as performance art. Now, performance art is a pre-internet method of annoying groups of people using your body and voice working in conjunction in order to create a compelling spectacle that heightens said annoyance. Um, though if you read anything about performance arts origins, you'll probably read um, some quote uh, talking about how European performance artists of yesteryear were mounting uh, an attack on our bourgeois sensibilities through these aesthetic provocations. Um, but that's that's just hogwash, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes internet it's just fun to annoy motherfuckers. This kind of nuisance amusement is the genesis of performance art. Now between 1910 and 1930, European artist groups such as the Futurist, uh, the Dada Boys, and the Surrealists enjoyed an unprecedented amount of attention for their performative antics. But honestly though, back then it was really easy to get a rise out of an audience. I mean, all you had to do was get on stage dress kind of peculiar like the Tin Man or something and say the word shit and chances are a fist fight would break out in the crowd and you were guaranteed a returning audience for the next night and thus you know many movements were born then but in the early 1930s avant-garde performance art was dealt two very fatal blows the first of which was the Nazis coming into power in Germany and the subsequent persecution of modernism and the avant-garde and the second blow to performance art was the invention of the whoopee cushion in 1930 which severely diminished audiences for pre-war European performance art by allowing people in mass to annoy their families and friends in the comfort of their own homes for very little money. Performance art, you know, it would have weathered uh, the storm of socialist realism in due time, but, you know, the whoopee cushion was a fatal strike that sounded the death knell of the avant-garde in Europe, and I'm not even going to get into the invention of the electric hand buzzer. I mean, pretty much the whole gag industry, you know, it just fucked up the whole foundation of, of European performance art. It's a tragedy, isn't it? Not? But eventually, World War II came to an end, and oh blah dee, oh blah da, performance art once again flourished. I mean, and the people was doing all types of crazy stuffs in the name of performance art. I mean, you had John Cage, you know, making musical compositions using random ass household equipment, you know. Um, you had uh, Saburo Murakami uh, of the Gutai running through shit, um, probably some kind of uh, therapy for being a citizen of the only country ever to have an atomic bomb dropped on them. Uh, my boy Yves Klein inventing the precursor to Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, by the time the late 60s and early 70s came around, it was like the world was on fire, you know what I'm saying? I mean, everyday life was just fucking bomb. Mad sex, the races mixing it up, um, you know, the Vietnam War. I mean, capitalism even back then was just like it is today. A jealous boyfriend of an economic system that had to get rid of its competition at all costs. So in order to stand out and assert itself as more bonkers than an everyday life filled with sex and violence, performance art had to be on some extraordinary shit in order to stand out. I mean, basically, just play at being more violent and sexual than real life. You know, you had Cara Lee, um, you know, just doing shit like, like this. Um, you know, you had people too afraid to commit suicide, so they decided to use the banner of performance art in order to give their demise some posterity. Um, you know, you had people living out fantasies of being a butcher meets Aleister Crowley. Um, you got Queen Marina putting herself in the hands of her audience. I mean, you look at this dude right here. You could tell he was like the first one online and the only thing he was thinking the whole time was teddies. Um, you know, more suicide attempts, um, more trusting uh, white men with scissors. Uh, you know, and uh, don't it look like she's trying to escape the comic book world from that aha video, Take On Me? More Aleister Crowley shit. And I just wanted to show this because I like it. And Cara Lee again. Um, the truth is, I would still sleep with her now. How old, how old is she actually? Cara Lee, if you're watching, holla at me. You know, email me. All right. So yeah, back in that pivotal time, life was larger than life, and performance art had to be like 18 times larger than life in order to assert itself as a unique phenomenon worthy of being called an art. You know, but what about the present though, right, Internet? Well, up until 
2011, life in the first world had been kind of a snore, really. I mean, but 2011, 2011 was mad crazy. We had massive political upheavals in the Middle East, which was cray. Um, Time magazine even named the protester the sexiest man alive. Steve Jobs and Kim Jong-il is chilling at the crossroads with my Uncle Charles. Um, and, you know, thanks to the diligent struggles of the Occupy protests in the United States, Americans finally realized that using our right to free speech really just means casting a tiebreaker vote in X Factor. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to camp out in public spaces, it's only cool if you're going to wrestle somebody in Best Buy for Xbox 360. I mean, don't judge these people, Internet. Those Xboxes probably came with that connection. You know what I'm saying? I mean, have you ever played Child of Eden, Internet? That shit is next level. I mean, you'd be doing all types of shit like firing lasers from your hands. I mean, look, look how fun this is. But like I was saying, you know, despite how crazy 2011 was, the present times is a bit different. What is this thing that makes the present so different? Well, Internet. It's the fucking internet. Um, the thing that permeates our environments. The internet is that foul specimen, that playground of mediated experience, that paragon of distraction and gibberish, the digital rear window that is the pedophile's delight. The internet has severely altered human interaction. And despite social media's recent role as a tool for political mobilization, you know, 99% of the 99% still be just using the internet to... <laughs> Look at her, she's so cute. She hugged the kitten. Oh, these old people don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> oh, this bitch must be drunk. <laughs> Look at this nigga. He got ketchup all over him. That's mad funny. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, oh, shit. I'm doing art thoughts. Sorry, internet. That's very unprofessional of me. So, yeah, I must say that a great majority of us is dying isolated deaths. But because, you know, we're able to give a play-by-play -play update of our demise, we think we in the company of our best friends. You know, and that's just bullshit. Um, but all is not lost. Uh, this new emptiness that is our contemporary life has not gone unnoticed by performance art. Like superheroes out of a reboot movie of a comic book franchise, performance artists have responded to this dire situation, to this life more ordinary. So in order to battle this technological Sahara of experience and jumpstart true human interaction once again, performance art has to forego all that wild shit and renew our relationship with our everyday lives by calling attention to the basic structures that compose life, you know, and that we once took for granted. The desecration of real life has given us new performance art like this. Marina Abramovich, you know, she's like the Dr. Dre of performance art, man. She's been, you know, she's been around forever. You know, Marty Kotak, um, The Birth of Baby X, Dave McKenzie's Waiting Pieces, Christian Jankowski's The Hunt, Nate Hill's Death Bear, Bruce Nauman's uh, Setting a Good Corner. Um, I mean, who knows what this is? I don't even think this is a performance, really. I think Bruce just needed to put a fence down. I wanted to show a picture of Tino Segal's This Progress, but I couldn't find any images online. And it would just look like a bunch of people walking around the Guggenheim anyway. So I'm just going to show this picture of Ryan Gosling. To tell you the truth, Internet, this is probably the best time for the quote unquote layman to get into performance art on the ground floor. You know what I'm saying? To get into performance art with a low APR financing. You know what I'm saying? Because if these professional uh, performance artists or artists um, in one way or another are recontextualizing the everyday, um, then why can't you, John Q, 99% in the audience, turn your unremarkable life into a series of micro performances that reveal the performative nature? Nature of the ritual of the everyday. So here are some free performance pieces that you can use that are based actually on a friend of mine's life who wishes to remain a name. You can do the graduate from college $80,000 in debt and work in a coffee shop piece, default on student loans piece, get turned down for a PayPal credit card piece, accidentally text a picture of your penis to your mother instead of your girlfriend piece, come home for Thanksgiving and your mother can't look you in the eye piece, your girlfriend eventually leaves you because you call her by your mother's name during sex, a second time piece. Run into ex-girlfriend on the street and she's now dating another girl. Have an awkward conversation and after you say your goodbyes and walk away, you can hear the both of them laughing cruelly piece. Get turned down for a Sears credit card piece. Decide to go down to Occupy Wall Street and meet some new people piece. The horizontal 1% in your protest sign that says fuck the 1% is misconstrued as a penis and scrotum and you are met with ridicule piece. Start spending your weekends indoors piece. Watch reruns of the Golden Girls like a lot piece. 
No matter how hard you try not to, the phrase, thank you for being a friend, always makes you cry peace. After many months, perfect the art of simultaneous masturbating and crying peace. Film it and upload it to Vimeo piece. The Whitney emails you for a studio visit piece. I'm a respected performance artist piece. And these are but a few examples in which you can transform a rather uh, forgettable life into a self-conscious reframing of that life in order to call attention to the profound forgettableness of all of our lives.